Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on another episode of Startup Talks. Cybersecurity is an issue which has been ignored uh, uh, for a very long time and Pakistan has had to pay a very high price for it, especially during this year when attempts have been made uh, to penetrate financial institutions. Uh, and uh, government bodies. The latest one being just last week where the country's biggest bank, the uh, National Bank of Pakistan, along with that uh, about seven, eight other banks uh, were hacked. And uh, uh, previously uh, FBR has been uh, also been a victim of this. So to speak on the subject, we are joined today by uh, Farooq Nair, um, a long time associate who I'm actually happy to have met here after a gap of over 20 years. Uh, Farooq is an expert in cybersecurity. He's based out of Canada. Uh, he has been a member of Orion, uh, Ontario's uh, research and education network, uh, been with the PwC as an advisor on cybersecurity and also been associated with the institutions, financial institutions that is in Pakistan. So, Assalamu alaikum Farooq, how are you? Thank you for being here. Welcome Tamur, pleasure to be here. That's pleasure awesome. to be connected to you after so many years. <laughs> Same here. Uh, so Farooq, uh, well, this is not my subject, but to enlighten everybody, right? Uh, nobody talks about this in Pakistan, actually. Uh, what uh, intellectual property and cybersecurity and all of these things are uh, uh, nowhere uh, in the scene. So how important is it, do you think? So let's just say cybersecurity is a fundamental piece uh, when we are using technology or using technology as an enabler. And we live in, in a day and age where we cannot even function without a minute without technology. Mm -hmm. I think COVID-19 has taught us that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they, I mean, be it conducting transactions, be it talking through family, connecting to people, mm -hmm. we need to use technology. And if we uh, and with technology, we need we need to have the basic security controls in place. Cybersecurity is a fundamental piece. Of that. <laughs> and uh, since you know the infrastructure uh, in Pakistan, you've been associated here with some institutions as well. So, uh, what do you think is lacking in Pakistan? I think the first thing which I want to clarify is that. What's lacking in Pakistan is uh, responsibility when it comes to managing news and information. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in Pakistan, we rely a lot on uh, rumors and disinformation, and that causes lots of confusion. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I'm saying that is that, uh, I mean, Canada and the US are considered to be a developed nation. Mm -hmm. And they, and yeah, even in a developed nation like Canada and the US, we have seen incidents and uh, breaches which are uh, which are bigger than the ones which we have seen in Pakistan, huge by, by all magnitude. And these are countries which have got regulations, controls, which are which they consider which are part of the world and uh, considers to be far more advanced. So I think what's uh, lacking in Pakistan is uh, is uh, responsibility around that, uh, especially in terms of how media news is handled. Mm -hmm. Second thing is uh, we need to have. Uh, more skilled people in the space. We've got some really good brains in Pakistan, mm -hmm. but the main problem in Pakistan is brain drain. There's lots of talent that has left Pakistan, perhaps in the last two decades, which were really good. And um, I'm not saying that the people who have left behind are, are not good. I mean, the people who are left behind are are there, but we need more people in the space. We need more cybersecurity talent mm -hmm. uh, in the leadership space, or of course, in the hands-on uh, category too. But I mean, we have the same problem in this world. So let's just say that the the key pain points pertaining to cybersecurity are the same as the Western world or developed countries as in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is that uh, perhaps from the regulatory perspective, we need to have clarity on things because the only regulator uh, which is uh, doing some work in this space is uh, the State Bank of Pakistan. And to some extent, the PTA and the Security and Exchange Commission of Pakistan are also kicking in. Uh, but I think one of the things which you will be happy to know is that the cabinet uh, in Pakistan approved the national, the Pakistan's first ever national cybersecurity policy about two, three months ago, which is definitely a good start. Mm -hmm. 
So I think Pakistan is catching up. Uh, we need to streamline a few things. We need to uh, make sure that we have some success stories which people can learn from. Otherwise, I mean, we shouldn't be judging organizations uh, or countries based on breaches. We should judge them based on how they respond to it. Mm-hmm. Because, as I said, I mean, this part of the world has seen the worst. I mean, last week we had the transport, uh, the transit system of Toronto being hit by a ransomware. Mm-hmm. Uh, end of 2020, all the key agencies and the sensitive organizations uh, in the US and Canada were hit with the solar winds attack. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we've got lots of horror stories too uh, in this part of the world. So, I think we just need to manage these incidents more responsibly mm-hmm. and make sure that, uh, I mean, as I said, I said, we need to judge the organizations based on how they respond to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good that you mentioned that uh, uh, the information should be managed responsibly. Uh, I, uh, I do feel uh, one thing here that uh, the institutions and organizations also need to act responsibly because this, uh, first of all, Pakistan is uh, about 10, 12 years behind in adopting uh, the digital infrastructure right uh, compared to uh, even to some regional countries so even for uh, big institutions digitization is uh, kind of like uh, having an app and people being able to just conduct a few transactions uh, through the mobile application but uh, you know digitization is much much uh, more beyond that it's it involves digitizing the whole customer journey and uh, each and every nook of things so uh, don't you think that uh, institutions uh, need to pay more attention to uh, security matters as well are you talking about institutions all the institutions as a whole or uh... Uh, just the uh, uh, this is a generic question. I, I, I'm not yeah. going to name names. It's not good uh, to uh, yeah. name names. No, so no, I definitely agree with you. Uh, I think uh, the entire, uh, like all the industries should learn from the financial services industry. I think in the past uh, 15 years, uh, State Bank of Pakistan has come up with numerous circulars and guidelines as it pertains to cybersecurity. <laughs> and I think just the fact that uh, they talk about an enterprise governance framework. They talk about a risk-based approach. They talk about every financial institution having a CISO. They talk about uh, institutions reporting the incidents. I think that's a good starting point. And I think uh, given the fact that uh, cybersecurity based on uh, on numerous supports uh, by the leading big four firms mm-hmm. in North America is it should be the number one topic mm-hmm. of discussion at the boardrooms. I think we should follow a similar approach in all the organizations. And having said that, the same should be applicable to startups too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying that is that, I mean, if you, uh, I've given talks on uh, breaches and how breaches affect organizations. And one of the things that I've noted is that lots of tech startups uh, who who in a, in, a, in a matter of just one to two years are able to grow from a startup to a fully functional organization. I mean, given uh, the the uptake and the kind of funding they get, and one of the things which startups all uh, off, I'm not blaming all of them, but some of them tend to ignore is having uh, the foundational piece around uh, cybersecurity, mm-hmm. and what that has resulted in is uh, many tech companies being victims of cyber attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure you must have heard about what happened to Uber many years ago. Mm-hmm. They had a big breach, and the other uh, tech companies who have been uh, uh, facing uh, breaches and all that, mm-hmm. and especially in uh, the area of uh, payments, most of these startups or tech organizations who deal with payments have been victims of uh, breaches also. So, be it a large company, be it a listed company, be a startup, cybersecurity should not be an afterthought. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we uh, in Canada have come up with as a framework is called secu- uh, privacy by design. Mm-hmm. So, we encourage organizations over here uh, to have privacy and security by design and by default. Mm-hmm. Achha, uh, the problem uh, is not only limited to larger organizations. Um, the tech scene uh, is still in its nascent stages in Pakistan. So there are lots of uh, startups you all, 
probably know of most of them. Uh, even for uh, companies providing um, exporting services like uh, software development and all those kinds of things, they're not very big companies, but they've been there uh, for some time. So I'm going to just want to club two questions here into one. Uh, without naming anybody, there was a, there was a software house just last year, um, uh, their infrastructure was hacked and uh, somebody was asking for like uh, 10 or 20 bitcoins as a ransom, right? And uh, uh, they were uh, totally lost how to uh, deal with uh, such a thing. So uh, when things like these happen, right? Uh, uh, people uh, scramble around and uh, run around like headless chickens uh, with, uh, with no answers. So what do you think are the key elements that uh, startups and small businesses uh, should uh, take into consideration before actually going out into the market or uh, when building their infrastructure? I think uh, the key thing is that uh, all startups should uh, have a basic, a basic bare minimum risk management framework, mm -hmm. or perhaps they should adopt a risk-based approach. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you, uh, I'm sure the term SWOT analysis would be familiar. I'm sure, and many organizations do a SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. How about uh, startups also doing a risk assessment? Yeah. Just taking stock of what are the key risks which the organization could be prone to. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of studies out there in which they can see that, okay, what kind of risks were similar organizations to us prone to? What, how, what are the key incidents? Mm -hmm. Analyze them and then plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, uh, see, the thing is that uh, IBM and Bowman Institute, they publish uh, an annual report on the cost of a breach. Mm -hmm. The cost of a breach uh, about three to four years ago was between $3.5 million has now gone beyond $8 million. Mm -hmm. $3 million for Pakistan is a very big amount. Yeah. So, I mean, this amount, I mean, for instance, if a small company or a startup in Pakistan actually experiences a breach and in which a significant number of accounts have been breached, mm -hmm. that whole company could be wiped out in a matter of days. Because, I mean, keeping up with that, I mean, uh, the, the, let's just say that the blessing in disguise in Pakistan is uh, that we don't have data protection laws. We don't have people whose data have been breached as doing a class action suit against the organization. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of the coin is that most of the startups in Pakistan are actually uh, serving clients in that part of the world, yeah. or perhaps are being funded by people mm -hmm. who are from the other part of the world. So they would, in fact, uh, uh, venture VCs and private equity firms, they also require some tech companies to have a basic policy framework or a risk-based risk, a risk -based approach. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, they have been burned also and all that. And uh, I mean, if you, even if you look at credit rating agencies, they rate organizations based on how strong of a security posture they have. Mm -hmm. So let's just say that it's not even a matter of choice now. Mm -hmm. I mean, tech organizations or any company should have a basic uh, framework in place to have a risk-based approach against cybersecurity. Acha, um, coming down to uh, uh, risk-based approach and uh, let's touch uh, on the NICs, right? NICs facilitate uh, these startups. They, they're doing a wonderful job. There's no doubt about that. Or every year, two, two, three, three cohorts are taking So, uh, but uh, I feel, uh, I may be wrong here, but I do feel that uh, their help and their uh, cooperation with startups is centered more around just building the business, building the market and helping them secure funding and that sort of thing. What, what uh, if you know of uh, uh, them, uh, providing uh, uh, advice on cybersecurity issues, please enlighten me. If not, right, what do you think should be done from that? And because all these startups, they are uh, more and more dependent on technology by the day. So I'm not sure about NICs in particular, mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I think about two years ago, I visited, uh, I was invited by the KPIT board in Peshawar and I met and have people from NIC Peshawar and Islamabad. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, back at that time, the KPIT board did have a KP CERC, which is uh, KP Cybersecurity Incident Response Center. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if that is functional right now because the gentleman who was running that is now part of the Ministry of IT and Technology in mm -hmm. Islamabad. Uh, but I'm not aware of NICs running any sessions around cybersecurity or mm -hmm. doing some mentoring for the startups around cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'd be more than welcome to work with these guys. I mean, I, I know the person at NIC Peshawar and I visited uh, the NIC in Islamabad also two years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think two years ago, uh, the National IT Board wanted to invite me to deliver a talk in Islamabad, but I couldn't make it. But I think there is, uh, they feel the need for that. I'm not sure if they have conducted any sessions, but I mean, if they would want to, I, I can, I would love to have. If you, if you want, I can uh, help you connect with the people in Karachi and Lahore as well. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't have any issues with that. So, uh, Farooq, uh, uh, Pakistan, everybody says that uh, Pakistan has talent. No doubt about it. Uh, it does have talent and it is all all that talent is exported so uh, there is already uh, quite a bit of uh, shortage in the tech in, uh, industry not only in pakistan it's a global phenomenon now where big tech companies they are uh, hunting for uh, resources and uh, uh, cutting off uh, people from other big tech companies and taking them on board right it's a normal practice so uh, in Pakistan, with regards to just this particular niche of uh, providing uh, infrastructure security, uh, uh, what do you think should be done and uh, uh, how should the talent be groomed? So the couple of things which the Western world is doing in order to address the, the issue of staff turnover. Mm -hmm. uh, the year 2021 uh, saw lots of people uh, uh, leaving jobs, even in this part of the world. In fact, we had a survey by Gartner, which just came out two days ago about what was the reason behind that. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we see in uh, security and technology uh, globally, uh, as I said, it's not just seen in Pakistan, is turnover. Mm -hmm. Staff turnover is something which is prevalent. Mm -hmm. And there, and there some thing, there's some steps that certain organizations have taken in order to address that. Mm -hmm. The first thing is to uh, ensure that you are able to identify talent within your organization mm -hmm. who is willing to grow, who's willing to invest, who has already invested a great deal of time in your organization, mm -hmm. and who you know that even if you train them, they will at least stay here for two years. Because in my opinion, if somebody is able to complete a two-year cycle at an organization, that's a good enough time for an organization to, let's just say, uh, uh, a good ROI for them. Mm -hmm. So two years is not bad. So making sure that you're able to find people within your organization, mentor them if they are able, uh, want to make a career in cybersecurity or looking to grow within that field. That, that goes a long way. <clears throat> the second thing is we need to have more and more programs around internships, co-ops, uh, in which we are going to institutions uh, and recruiting interns who are in their third year or fourth year. Mm -hmm. And those people actually become your entry-level employees. We, I've tried this uh, uh, in, in Canada, and this really works out. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I mean, this is a really good investment. And in fact, grooming people at that early stage really works out. So I think in Pakistan, we need to have that industry and academia uh, alliance, not just as a as a fashion statement, but something that we can actually implement and live. Okay. Now, um, uh, Farooq, since we are uh, running short of time, so I'm just going to squeeze in a question or two here. Uh, in your opinion, uh, uh, as a uh, because most startups they are not well versed with technology, right? Um, they just they just do what they are told. Uh, so for uh, a layman, right? what steps do you think uh, founders need to consider, right? Uh, like one, two, three, uh, that uh, if you could, uh, if you were to jot them down, 
uh, into bullets what do you think a layman should consider when he is launching his startup in terms of cyber security uh, two things which they need to probably get familiarize themselves with i'm just going to interrupt uh, because most of the infrastructure most of the uh, tech uh, infrastructure they are trying to build is uh, more and more going over on cloud right so uh, uh, that's the key element uh, which they don't have any information about so as i said uh, they should uh, i mean the whole approach should be more around security and privacy by design mm -hmm. so for instance if they are going to be adopting a cloud uh, infrastructure be it saas bs pass or uh, uh, infrastructure as a service mm -hmm. uh, there are cloud security guidelines which are available there is a cloud security alliance which has a uh, a baseline or a minimum set of controls which is in place mm -hmm. so whatever technology so i think it goes back to the fact security and privacy by design mm -hmm. that's the first thing mm -hmm. second thing is basic security hygiene mm -hmm. so even before they start adopting huge frameworks they should have the practice of basic security hygiene in their organizations on our to security hygiene ke andar we got things like having passwords having good backups having a good change management process in place uh and uh, there are some other controls also around network security uh and human resource security and all that so mm -hmm. if they have so they should so as i said start small start from the basics start from basic security ig mm -hmm. so yeah if they start off for that and they start building upon that uh because i mean one of the key things that i've often seen in pakistan is that people try to boil the boil the ocean that okay we'll adopt a big framework or something mm -hmm. just start small just see where you guys start with something that you, which you can manage i mean if they can start off with just those basic security practices just start off with that mm -hmm. and then this on the because every organization has a risk appetite also yeah. determine your risk appetite and based on that i profile just start building upon it. sir in uh, farooq in the end um, uh, you've been uh, you are an expert pakistani uh, you are a known figure uh, in canada as well uh, with regards to cyber security right what message in the end uh, would you have for uh, want to be uh, people who are uh, looking to get in on the ladder of uh, technology and uh, cyber security uh i think people uh who want to adopt cyber security as a career uh should understand uh i mean what are the key areas within cyber security mm -hmm. uh, that's the first thing uh the second thing is that anybody who is uh willing to do anything in the area of technology be it entrepreneurship or uh, uh, going for a specific specific career mm -hmm. they should understand that security and cyber security is going to be part of It's, it's a part of every possible technology stream right now so they shouldn't ignore that they should uh take that into account and one of the things that i often tell people is that even if you're not a cyber security professional you should be aware of the key practices around that so don't shy away from those things mm -hmm. and don't just leave it to the experts because cyber security at the end of the day is everybody's responsibility mm -hmm. Sana Farooq thank you very much for uh, the insights it was uh, lovely talking to you i wish we had more time right uh, uh, hopefully uh, we can do this again i'll uh, try and uh, get you uh, connected uh, to the relevant uh, nics as i mentioned earlier and uh, best of luck with uh, whatever you're doing in canada sure. it was nice talking to you same here